Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good evening, Webster. Good to see you, my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to get started in a few minutes. In a few minutes, we're going to get started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know God is so good. Every day, his mercy is new every morning. God gives us another chance to get up to get things right with himself on a daily basis. And I'm excited today. You know, I had a birthday on last week, Tuesday, and God continues to keep on blessing me. And, and I'm excited because of that, because he allowed me to have another opportunity to keep on doing what I love to do, and that's teach his word and to give him glory. You know, God God deserves the glory. It doesn't matter what we go through in this life. He deserves the glory. Sometimes things happen in our life that becomes out of our hands that we can't handle. But yet God is faithful. He's faithful to keep doing what he promised to do. But we have to continue to put him first. That's the most important thing. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One second, someone's trying to figure out how to get online with us tonight. Hallelujah. Let me see if I can share this with uh, another person right now. Let's see. Five. Hallelujah. Tonight going to be a really great lesson. You know, um, I'm really enjoying the different studies that we have engaged in these last uh, several months. And I, I tell you, God has really been good through, you know, the revelation, knowledge and understanding he's been giving us, you know, through his word. And I, I'm just excited about it because I know that without God, God bless you, honey. God bless. You know, um, God has really been pouring into our hearts understanding of his word to help enlighten us to overcome the different challenges that we faced in this life. You know, so it's very important and vital that we grab hold of the revelation from God's word. God bless you, Kim. I'm glad you made it on. 
Thank you for tuning in tonight. You know, it's so, so important for us to grasp hold of the revelation knowledge that God has been pointing to our hearts concerning his word for your spiritual growth. Because if you don't hold on to what God is, is conveying to us through the spirit, you will continue to walk according to the dictates of your flesh, which will lead you down a pathway of destruction, which keeps you separated from walking in divine truth that God has poured into our hearts. So I, I am excited tonight. We have another opportunity to teach God's word. And tonight we're going to talk about the Antichrist. We're going to have a really great lesson tonight dealing with the Antichrist. And I don't know about you, but when you get an understanding of how there's going to be another spirit going to take over the world, and it's going to look and sound like Christ, but it's going to be against Christ. So Antichrist means to be against Christ. And that's what we're going to engage in tonight in our lesson is the spirit of the Antichrist coming out of 1 John chapter 4, um, verse starting in verse 1. 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 1. But before we go into the scripture tonight, I'm going to read a devotional. And then we're going to go into our, uh, our lesson. So the devotional for today, February 16th, it says, Today, Lord God, my Father, I have a strong desire and passion to live for you, Father. God, make my purpose and life's plans you have for me very clear. Lord, as you speak to me, let me be receptive and obedient spirit. Obey my mind to receive the appointment and assignment you have placed before me. I know, Lord, if you call me to it, you will see me through it. Lord, I will plainly write the vision down and start activating my faith by my actions. I know faith is dead if I do not apply actions to it. Lord, I'm a willing vessel. Use me, Lord, so the entire world will see more of you, God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We ought to give God a shout of praise on that one. Because when God begins to reveal to you his plan, his purpose for your life, he, he makes it clear. He, he doesn't come to you in mysteries and secrets. He makes it clear where you understand and see exactly what God is talking about. So you can go forward to fulfill the vision God has given you for your life and the plan he has for your life to be established. So faith without works is dead. So you mix your faith with your works and you see God bringing the past in your life. So let's go into a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your blessings of health and strength. We thank you for your divine truth. We thank you for the revelation knowledge that comes from your word that gives us insight into the mysteries of the gospel. And how, Father God, your word is transforming. It brings life into a dead thing. It changes our hearts, O oh God, from darkness to light. It fulfills your plan, your purpose, your will for our desires to be lined up with your word. And Father, tonight, we ask you to first to forgive us for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and to wash us in the blood of the Lamb, O oh God. Then we thank you that we have been washed and cleansed by the blood and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask that the anointing flow in the atmosphere tonight, that whoever hears this word tonight from, from the day forward, God, will be, Father, enlightened. We have a, a understanding and clarity from the word of God on how to recognize the spirit of the Antichrist when it presents itself to them. As a believer, a child of God, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, they will have a discernment, a keen discernment to know when it's the adversary that's working behind the scene to deceive and to manip manip manipulate and lead them into a trap of despair and darkness, oh God. And we thank you. Now open up our hearts to receive this word tonight, O oh God, that we would follow, allow the word to penetrate in our hearts, to bring us to a place, Father God, where we begin to grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know, I'm excited tonight for this lesson because this is a really great lesson. It has a lot of truth to it. And one thing about the spirit of Antichrist it's very manipulative. The Antichrist will come and he will do miracles, signs, and wonders. He will look like God. He will sound like Christ. He will try to present himself to be Christ in the flesh. So, and the thing that God wants us to understand that when the Antichrist comes, he comes in many different ways 
to present a world world system, a one world government, a system that will control the entire world. And, and God says even the very elect, his children will be deceived. So we got to recognize this spirit when it presents itself to us and know exactly how to oppose and how to deal with this spirit when it comes. I was looking at uh, a little commentary on what is the Antichrist. And it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, which says, Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. So Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. So the Antichrist comes in the last hour. What he's talking about, it says he's coming in the time where Christ is soon to come. So if you're not careful and don't know your word, you're going to start falling into that spirit of the Antichrist to be opposing God and against Christ. It says the Antichrist speaks against Christ. He speaks against Christ. So, dear children, in the last hour, as you've heard, that the Antichrist is coming. So it says he's coming. But we already know the Antichrist is in the world. He just have not became visible just yet. But in the time and season, he's going to, be, you know, going to make himself known to the entire world. But during this time, as born-again believers, the rapture would have taken place and God's people would have been caught up in the air to be with Christ. But the Antichrist is going to be here in this earth to deceive many people who are so-called Christians who call themselves followers of Christ, but yet they live a carnal lifestyle. It says, this is how we know that the last hour, the specific term Antichrist is used seven times in the scripture, twice here in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, and also in 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, and chapter 4, verse 3. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, first, and 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, and twice in 2 John chapter 7, which is verse 7, 2 John verse 7. So the meaning of the term Antichrist simply is against Christ. As Apostle John records the first and the second John, an antichrist denies the father and the son. First John chapter two, verse 22. It says, does not acknowledge Jesus. So verse John chapter two, verse 22, it says, who is the liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the antichrist. He who denies the father and the son. So it's the antichrist is going to come and going to deny the father and the son. Because he doesn't want to follow truth. He's not going to be truth, but he's going to appear to be the truth. But you got to recognize this spirit by the word of God because God is going to make you aware of his devices and his tactics when you get into the word of God and begin to study the word of God and, and begin to allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart. God will give you clarity and understanding how to know this spirit when it comes. So first John uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 22, it says this. It's the same, it says the same thing. Who is the liar? But he who denies Jesus is the Christ. And then um, chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now in the world already. So the word of God, it validates that the Antichrist is already here in the world, but you as a believer must know the word of God. So when he begins to reveal himself, you will see him for what he is. You're going to have a lot of pastors deceived. A lot of church folk deceived. Why? Because they don't know the word of God for themselves. And then you go to uh, 2 John verse 7. It says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is a deceiver and the Antichrist. So the word of God tells us to specifically who the Antichrist is. It's an individual 
a group of people who's going to deny that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And they're going to deny the power of God that's working in our lives today. And they're going to even mimic God's, God's attributes and God's characteristics. But the, the underlying factor is the spirit behind that spirit is a demonic spirit, which is the devil himself at work in their lives. So when John made it clear about the Antichrist, he said there have been many Antichrists. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. So there's going to be many people that's going to fall under this spirit and going to begin to walk in darkness and not in the truth and deceive many believers. The Bible prophecies or eschatologies, experts believe that, and that's talking about the, uh, the study of, of, of death, the burial, and the life. It says the experts believe that the Antichrist will be the ultimate embodiment of what is it is meant to be against Christ. And that word embodiment is a tangible or visible form of an idea or quality or feeling. And so what it's saying that the Antichrist is going to come present himself in the physical idea, giving you ideas that sounds good, that's going to draw your attention. Like we talked about last week about the seducing spirit. The seducing spirit is working with the power of the enemy and is going to deceive many born again believers because we're not studying the word of God. We don't know the word of God. We're not trying to even take our time out to seek God's face, consecrate, to spend time with God, to know his word for ourselves. So we take what man tells us as doctrine. And the eschatologies. Of the, of the word is concerning the death and the judgment and the final destiny of the souls of human humankind. So we got to know what God is talking about in his word that when this Antichrist come, he's coming with a purpose to deceive the followers of Christ to follow him to a place of destination, which is going to be the lake of fire. Because the Bible says in Revelation, they're going to have their, their end in the lake of fire. It said, claim to be the true Messiah. The Antichrist will seek world domination and will attempt to destroy all followers of Jesus Christ and the nation of Israel. That's why God told us in his word in one of the Psalms, pray for the peace in Jerusalem. Because he knows that when we pray for the peace of God to rule, it's going to be in Israel. God's peace is going to over, overcome the power of the enemy in the lives of his people. And he says when, when the, the temple has been restored in Israel, and, which is in Jerusalem, that's when Christ is going to be coming. So we got to get into the word of God and begin to study the word of God and see what God has to, to show, us, show us through his word that we be aware of the spirit. And he says other biblical, biblical references of the Antichrist is imposing boastful as in Daniel chapter 7. You read Daniel chapter 7 when you get a chance because it talks about who opposes the Jews and tries to change the set time and the laws. So when you read in Daniel chapter 7, you'll find out that the end Antichrist, even Daniel talked about it during his time, that it was going to take place thousands of years later that the Antichrist is going to come into the world. And then he says, the leader who establishes a seven-year covenant with Israel and then breaks it. That's in Daniel chapter 9. The king who sets up the domination, the abomination of desolation. The king who sets up the abomination of desolation. In Mark chapter 13, verse 14. It says, but when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the, leaders, let the reader understand and let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. In other words, you got to get away from this spirit when it presents itself to you. Because God is making it known to us through his word that when you get into the word of God, the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you how to identify and recognize this spirit. And then it talks about the man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. The, the man of lawlessness. And lawlessness is breaking the law. You're not following the rules and regulations. You're going according to your own way and your own mindset. And then he talks about the rider on a white horse representing his claim to be a man of peace. 
but yet they're going to be a man of war. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, it says, And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and, it, and its rider had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering to con and to conquer. So we got to recognize the Antichrist. He's going to come even appearing to be Christ in the last days. So when we get into our lesson tonight, in our lesson, some of the attributes of the Antichrist just a second, my computer acting goofy here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, some of the characteristics of the Antichrist is he denies the deity of Christ. He denies the deity of Christ. And the deity of Christ is Christ's dominion, Christ's authority. The, the, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He denies it. Then he denies the atonement. And we know what the atonement is, is how Christ paid the price for our, our sins and iniquity. That's atonement. Then it says he's against Christ and his teachings. Then it would be humanism. Talking about the humanity of the Antichrist. Then it talks about the Antichristian. Then it says the teachers of heresies. Heresies is a different belief system from the word of God. Then also worldly speech and actions. So it's going to sound like he's for God, but it's going to be worldly domination and actions to take over everything that you trust in that's called yourself, that's called to be part of God. He wants to take hold of, hold of that and strip you of your, your dominion, strip you of your identity, strip you of your nature, because he doesn't want you to be like Christ. He wants you to follow him and follow his, his, his wicked devices and his wicked doctrine. And then he's a deceiver. And then lawlessness. So all these different things are characteristics of the spirit of the Antichrist. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, it says, And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. The spirit attacks the very foundation of Christianity, from the virgin birth of Christ Jesus. If Jesus was not God in the flesh, then all his, other, all his other claims, such as the atonement, the healing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the resurrection from the dead, the rapture of the church, and the Lord's second comings are false. So if the Antichrist attacks the Christianity foundation, then everything that Christ stands for according to his standpoint, is false. But we know with our own personal conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he paid the price for our sin and iniquity. He had the power to heal. He gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He rose up from the spiritual place of death. And in the end, he's going to rapture the church in the second coming. The spirit of the Antichrist works through those who teach that Jesus was a good man, but nothing more. Muslims categorize Jesus as being a great prophet, but just one of many. Even the supposed message from the UFOs nullified the divinity of Christ, unidentified flying objects. Secular humanism. Secular, secular human, hum, humanism has been labeled the most dangerous religion today. It typifies the ancient struggles between God for man's will and God's will. It's a struggle. Secular humanism, it teaches you the dangers of religion today. So it tells you that, hey, you know, it's a struggle between God's will and man. So it wants you to follow according to your, your mindset. Simply states, humanism is man-centered religion that mistaken mistakenly thinks it can solve the problem of man independent of God. So humanism is a word that tells you I don't need God. I can fix my own problems. I can handle my own situations. I don't need God to change my thinking. I don't need God to, to heal me. I don't need God to do anything for me because I have the power in myself to do it myself. Absent of God. That's humanism. The, Dr. Bill Bright and national director of the Campus Crusade for Christ says, have you ever wondered why our society is becoming more secular? 
why prayer and the Bible readings are no longer welcome in our public schools? Have you wondered why Americans are much more tolerant today of sexual freedom, homosexuality, incest, and abortions? The religion of humanism is largely responsible for this. The religion of humanism is responsible for these things that have taken place to take the prayer out of schools, to take the Bible out of schools, and, and sexual freedom to do what you choose to please yourself. Because it's absent of God. Students in many secular schools are made to believe that they are not accountable to God, to parents or their pastors or teachers or civil authorities. They are told anybody values are as good as anybody else's and whatever you choose will be right for you because you chose it. Isn't that something that even in our educational system, children are being taught that they don't need nobody else. They don't have to follow their parents. They don't have to follow God. They don't have to listen to their pastors. They don't, they don't have to listen to the teachers. They don't have to obey civil authorities. We can do what we want to do when we choose to do it because we have the right to choose what we want to do in our lives. And that's a shame that people get in that type of mindset because the demonic activity has taken hold of their minds. And the enemy tells you that you can do what you choose to do. God doesn't care about that. God still loves you anyway. Check this out. God loves us unconditionally. True enough. But God hates the sin. God hates any time we rebel and choose to follow our own decisions and not follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inside of you will guide you into all truth and lead you in the pathway that God has ordained for you to walk in, that your life will be fruitful, that you will be obedient to fulfill the plan and the calling upon your life that God established before the foundation of the world. John Dewey is another scholar. It said it's shocking for some to learn that John Dewey, the father of progression education, was an atheist. He was the founder of the first president of the American Humanist, Human, Humanist Association. He said, there is no God and there is no soul. Can we wonder why our children are tempted to doubt the basic concepts of God's words when they're exposed to a daily diet of this kind of blasphemy? This is blasphemy in the eyes of God to deny that God does not exist. To deny that Jesus never came. That's blasphemy. Because you're speaking against the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that will be forgiven. But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. But also John warns us who is a liar. But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist and denies the Father and the Son. So if you deny that Jesus didn't come. Then you, you're walking in the spirit of Antichrist. Because now your mind is being conditioned and being reprogrammed to follow a lie instead of follow the truth. Whether or not they like to admit it, humanist, humanistic manifestos 1 and 2 are the humanistic what the Bible is to us. So what man believes according to humanistic manifestos, their belief system, their doctrines, their theology, the Bible is what we believe in our hearts. We believe that traditional dogmatic, dogmatic or authoritarian religion that, that place revelation, God's ritual, a, or creed above human needs and experience to do a disservice to the human species. So we believe anything that poses God's word goes against God's belief system. We find, an, find insufficient evidence for belief in existence of the supernatural. No deity will save us. We must save ourselves. And this is human, humanism. Humanism says all of this. It says we need to save ourselves. It also promises of immortality, salvation, or fear of eternal damnation are both illusory or harmful. In other words, it's illusion. It's not real. It never happened. So humanism tells you that, hey, you know what? The promise of immortality, that, that's a fake. That's a joke. That's not true. That's not gospel. There is no credible evidence that life survives the death of the body. That's humanism. 
Humanism tells you that when you die, there's no more existence. You're done. But the Bible tells us that when you die, to be absent from the body, to be present of the Lord. But it also talks about those who, who don't die in the Lord, that they will have their, their, lake, their, you know, their destiny in the lake of fire. So you've got to make a choice that I'm going to follow Christ to the very end of the world. Because that's our conviction. Our own personal conviction knows that salvation was brought through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I receive eternal life because of the blood that was shed on the cross. When Christ rose again, he brought us salvation, which now gave us the right to inherit eternal life and to live with Christ forever. That's the evidence that by the Spirit we believe it. The Spirit of God, we may not see no evidence with a natural mindset or the natural eyes, but we can see it through the Word of God and believe it with our hearts that it's true. The world opinion. The world opinion. This spirit of Antichrist is actively, actively shaping the world's opinion to accept the devil's counterfeit for Christ. World opinion. John said that we will recognize those people this strong man uses by their choices of key words and phrases. So if you listen to the different types of conversations that people who are of humanism, who are following after Antichrist with world opinions, you know their language. And you know that it does not line up with God's word. Their speech pattern will give them away to those who, who know the truth. It will give them away to the truth. Because if you know the truth of God's word, it says their speech will be recognized by truth. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them and pays attention to them. 1 John chapter 4, verse 5. The world blightly accepts the latest program of Satan as though it was the greatest thing ever proposed. The world accepts every program the enemy presents to itself and they accept it as is the greatest thing that ever happened. They never question evil. They only question good. Have you ever known somebody always want to question the good things you do, but they never question the bad things that happens in their life. They always want to find fault in you because you just seem to be so joyous, so full of life and vitality, always happy, always talking about the Lord, always praising God, but the enemy in the individual comes against you and to try to find any accusation to bring against your belief system. That's the Antichrist spirit. Because the Antichrist will oppose the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So anything that you're standing on, he comes against you to stop you from believing what you believe. And when it was time for, for the do your own thing phrase the, of the program to take effect, the loyal subjects of this world immediately began parroting without questions. In other words, they started following suit without questions. But God's people know this is not the language of God's word. We do not own a thing. We obey God's will. We are of God. And he that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth for the spirit of truth and the spirit of an error. Because God says in his word, he said, because we are followers of Christ, we know God's word for ourselves. That's why I say when you study God's word and you begin to de decipher God's word and to meditate on God's word, you know that truth from, from ground zero. It gets embedded in your heart. And if anyone comes to oppose that truth, your real red flag goes up. Your antenna sparks and say, oh, no, that don't sound like God. So you'll recognize their speech because it doesn't sound like God. It doesn't line up with God's word. Then it says, it says, then not only that, it says, but we know with our own personal conviction we obey the will of God. We are of God. God hears us. And we know that he hears us. And we do, and he don't hear the world. And then it says, the scripture talking about, we know the spirit of truth. And we know the spirit of error. Why? Because the Antichrist is of the spirit of error. The error is what the doctrine of the Antichrist is going to use to manipulate and control your mindset. There are so many different religions where people have been brainwashed. They've been brainwashed into following lies. I always think about 
back, you know, in the 80s when Jim Jones came about with a religion, when he, you know, tricked all those different people, hundreds of people to drink poison, to kill themselves. Why? Because they were following his doctrine. Because he said we all have to sacrifice ourselves to our God. And the people believed him, followed him, and did just what he instructed them to do. And they killed themselves. It's so many different false doctrines in this world where people have been brainwashed through years, generations, to follow lies and not truth. We, and it says mark them. The next point is mark them. We are to judge the world by the word of God and then mark them as being from this world system under the direction of Satan. When you recognize the spirit that's working in a person's heart of the Antichrist, God says we got to mark them. You got to know them. You got to recognize them, that they're under the influence, under the direction and the leadership of Satan. And if these people knock at your door with a new message of how to attain a higher level of consciousness or any other doctrine, we are not to receive or even listen to them. I remember this years ago where the Jehovah Witness came knocking at my door and was telling me that about Jesus Christ, that he was a prophet. And they were telling me that the new heaven, new earth is not going to be a new, new earth. They said the same earth that we're living in, that God is going to make this earth new. That's according to their belief system. So when they said this to me, I went to the word of God and began to show them in the word of God where God says he's going to make a new heaven, new earth. And I began to teach them what God says, and they had to leave. Why? Because they don't want to hear truth. When you start, talk truth, when you start talking truth, truth against their belief system, they're ready to run. That's why it's so important. You know God's word. So when people come try and teach you with anything that's a higher consciousness, you can get out, out of body experience. You can meditate. Going into that place of uh, Buddhism where you can get into a meditation and you can take yourself to a higher, higher place outside of your body. Pay attention. The Antichrist is working in that individual. Or any other doctrine. It, the word says don't even listen to them or receive them in your house. John warns us not to even say, God bless you, to those who abide not in the doctrine of Christ. He said, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that, that bids him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So if you say, God bless you, to someone that's teaching, teaching you a false doctrine, God says, then you partake of their evil deed. You partake of their doctrine. So you got to know the word of God for yourself. You got to know the word of God for yourself. Then it says, this may seem very harsh until we realize that millions of people are being deceived by these false ungodly teachers. And the scripture says in verse 7, many deceivers are entered in the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. First, second John, verse seven. So you got to know that this is the antichrist spirit. And it says, I've known Christians who say to these people, I won't take your literature because I don't believe that way. I have another way of looking at it. But God bless you anyhow. On the contrary, we should plainly tell them what we what we is that what they are propagating is not the word of God. In other words, what they're trying to give to you is not of the word of God. Those who are truly seeking the truth may stop and listen if we are led by the spirit of God. So he's saying, you're not even supposed to tell them God bless you or entertain them. Stop and listen to them because if you do this, you're giving the enemy opportunity to manipulate you. If, you don't know, if you're not strong in the word of God for yourself, and someone come to you with a false teaching, you'll be easily duped because you don't know the word of God. You haven't studied the word of God. You haven't grown in the word of God. And you haven't got the word of God embedded in you to the degree where you can oppose these, these forces that will come against you. So it's very vital to your spiritual growth to study God's word, to get that word rooted and grounded in you, that you'll be rooted and grounded in Christ. Because when the Antichrist comes, he's coming with, with a force. He's not coming... 
to, to hey, you know what? I, I'm coming to deceive you today. He going to come in a way to trick you. It's going to sound just like God. And, and he's going to tell you things that's going to sound part truth, but it's going to be a whole lie. We have been given powerful combat against the enemy. We have been given tremendous power to turn this world away from the evil purposes of Satan. So we need to not be shy about it. That is why we are here to combat the power of the devil with a greater power of God. Ye of God, little children, have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. First John uh, chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, ye are of God, little children. Why? He's talking about us as a believer. We are of God. Therefore, as of God, we got to recognize these spirits. They come. In a commentary, Matthew Henry commentary, it says, Christians who are well acquainted with the scriptures may in humble dependence may in humble dependence on divine teaching discern those who set forth doctrines according to the apostles and those who contradict them. The sum of the sum of revealed religions is in the doctrine concerning Christ, his person and his office. The false teachers spake of the world according to its maxim and its taste, and so as not to offend carnal men. The world approved them, and they made them rapid progress and had many followers such as in themselves. The world will love its own and love and, and will own its love. The true doctrine as the Savior's person, as leaders of men from the word of God, is to mark the spirit of truth in opposition to the spirit of error. So you got to know the spirit of error when it presents itself to you. So then he says, that is why we are here to combat the power of the devil with the greater power of God. So we got to know the word of God. Then it says, we, we uplift Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. First, uh, St. John chapter 14, St. John chapter 14, verse 6, he says that he will draw all men unto himself. St. John chapter 12, verse 32, St. John chapter 12, verse 32, he said, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. So Jesus made it clear that if we lift him up and recognize and know with a personal conviction, he is the way, the truth, and the life. God promises he would draw men unto himself. God's word stands forever. God's word stands forever. And when you get into God's word, God's word will show you the tactics of the enemy. And we got to understand that the Antichrist, the beast, along with his false prophets, and will be thrown in the lake of fire and they will spend all eternity in torment. Revelations chapter 20, verse 10, I mean, verse 20, Revelation chapter 20, verse 20. It says, and the beast was captured and with his false prophets who in it present, who, who present had done the signs by which they deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake that burns with sulfur. So thrown in a lake of fire. So the Antichrist, his prophets, his followers, his believers, they're all going to spend their eternity burning forever in the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. It says, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophets were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's the eternal destiny that God deemed for the enemy and all those who follow the opposing force of God. God says your end will be burning forever and ever in the lake of fire. So we got to get in God's word on a daily basis and recognize what God says in his word. Because if you don't know God's word for yourself, the enemy will definitely deceive you and will trick you. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel talks about, in verse 1, the whole chapter actually talks about the Antichrist. So when you get a chance, read Daniel chapter 7. And it says, uh, in verse 9, chapter 7, verse 9, it says, And as I looked, uh, uh, thrones were placed, 
and the ancient of days took his seat with his clothing as white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool and his throne was fiery flames and his wheels were burning with fire. And it says a stream of a stream of fire issued and come out before him and thousands and thousands served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court as the, the court set in judgment and the books were open. This is talking about Daniel was prophesying about revelation, but in the, in the time when Christ shall come, the books, when you read in revelation, God told John on the Isle of Patmos to write the, write the books. He gave him some books and said, write these things that I tell you. So John wrote some books concerning the end time. And God says, in the end time, this is what Daniel was prophesying, when Christ comes, because this, if you read in Revelation, it talks about the same thing, about the identity of how, what Christ shall appear to be like. But then it also talks about he will open up the books. In Revelation, talk about the same thing. He will open up the books. And then we open the books, then he's going to send forth the seven spirits throughout the earth to bring the seven plagues upon the land. So all these different things are going to take place, which is going to prepare the people for the appearance of the Antichrist, even for the judgment to take place. So we got to recognize that we are in a spiritual warfare and we cannot be playing church. We cannot be playing with the devil and claiming to be a child of God. You're going to have your strong conviction, be stern in your belief, walking upright before the Lord day and night. And know that God is on your side, leading you into triumph. When Christ rose again from the dead, the Bible tells us that he made an open spectacle of the enemy and triumph over him at the cross. So the enemy is going to have his time of defeat for forever when Christ comes in the last days. So you got to get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. Begin to study the scriptures. Excuse me. You got to study the scriptures and know for yourself who you are and who you belong to and allow the word of God to minister to your heart. Because without the word of God ministering to you, you're going to find yourself falling into one of these categories concerning the, the uh, Antichrist. Because the Antichrist is coming and already in the world and there are many followers of the Antichrist. False religions, false teachers, false pastors, false churches. I remember going to a, a spiritual, spiritualist church. They they deal with the world. They they believe in worshiping the trees and worshiping nature and all this stuff. And God began to show me that if we don't pay attention, these false religions that are out here would deceive the very elect that God has specifically ordained to be in the last time, that remnant, the people God chose, that in the last days we're going to judge the world. We got to study God's word. I say it again. It's vital to your spiritual health to get in God's word and get the word in you. Because if you don't know the word of God, the false promises, the false teachings, the inadequacy of the Spirit of God in your life is going to lead you down the pathway of destruction. And the Holy Spirit is warning us constantly to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a work when it need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study God's word, divide that word, get in that word, and the word will get in you. And you got to keep that word embedded in your heart. The true doctrine as to the Savior's person as leading men from the world to God is the mark of the spirit of truth in opposition to the spirit of error. The more pure and holy any doctrine is, the more likely to be of God. Nor can we by any other rules try the spirits whether they are of God or not. And what, one, is it, and what wonder is it that people of worldly spirit, a worldly spirit should cleave to those who are likely themselves to suit the schemes and the discourses to the corrupt taste of the enemy. So the enemy is going to present to you doctrines that's not of God. It's going to taste good. It's going to sound good. 
Paul warns Timothy in one of the writings. He said, many in the last days going to turn from the truth and follow a lie, turn to doctrines that satisfy their itching ears. In other words, it, it makes you feel good messages. It's a lot of folk go to church for a feel good message, but they don't want the conviction. A lot of people go to church because they want the promises of God, but they don't want God. A lot of people go to church to hear good music, to make them feel good, to make them hyped when they're feeling down. But I don't want God. That's the spirit that's creeping into the house of God subtly in those different ways to deceive and manipulate a child of God to think that when I go to the house of God, I can come any kind of way and stay the way I am and leave the same way I came in. But I come to tell you today, the word of God opposes that spirit. The word of God tells us that God is against that spirit. Because when you come into the house of God, he said, come as you are. But I guarantee when you come as you are, you leave changed. After hearing the word of God with your spirit and the word of God will begin to change your thinking. Change your heart. Change your life. Because God told Ezekiel, he said, tell the people of God, I'm going to take out the stony heart and give them a heart of flesh. And what he was talking about, that stony heart, is that rebellious heart. That sinful heart. That hardened, that callous heart. But he said, I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. Which is a symbolization of God said, I'm giving you my heart. So God wants us to know tonight, my brothers and my sisters, that he's speaking to the church. Open up your eyes. Wake up. Get out of your spiritual slumber. Begin to fast and pray. Seek the face of God. Consecrate. Get back on track. Get in the word of God. And allow the word of God to be your guide. Meditate on the word of God. Joshua 1 and 8. Put the word in your mouth. Keep it in your heart. Don't let it depart from you. But he said, then the word of God will make you successful. And you have good success. Make you prosperous and have good success. So the word of God will prosper you when you get into the word of God. And a lot of people think prosperity is a financial thing. It's not a financial thing when it comes to prosperity in God. The prosperity God is referring to is when you prosper in revelation knowledge of Christ. You get into the word of God. God calls you to prosper and wisdom and knowledge and understanding of who Christ is from the word of God. All the other things are the benefits of the prosperity of your relationship, your connection to, in, to Christ Jesus. So I want you to stay encouraged tonight and know that God is on your side and that he's working in your life to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And I guarantee when you walk in the word of God, God is going to change your thinking. He's going to make you more aware. He's going to open your eyes to see what he promised says in his word to those who don't follow after the truth. And I guarantee when you walk in God's word, God's word will encamp in your heart to keep you rooted and grounded in truth. And when the enemy comes against you, you're going to recognize that spirit because you're going to know when God is speaking to you by the spirit and you're going to give your heart over to the Lord and the Lord is going to really minister to you to keep you in the way of truth and righteousness. So as we come to the close of another lesson tonight, I pray that something has been said and done that will, that will encourage you, that will motivate you, that will stir you up in your spirit to keep moving in the direction God has for your life. Hold fast to the word of God and allow the word of God to minister to you. And I guarantee when you do, God's word is going to change your thinking and he's going to empower you with revelation knowledge of who he is. So as we come to the close, as always, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Let me get back to my lesson here. Give me one second. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. It's a prayer that they have at the end of every, every lesson in this book. And it says, Dear Father, thank you for your word and the spirit, and that the spirit will guide me through the last and evil days of this age. I place my trust completely in you, O God. 
your word states emphatically that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Thank you for that promise. Forgive me for ever doubting your ability to, to take care of me. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke your spirit of the Antichrist. I will not be dominated by your evil strong man, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer in the name of Jesus. I bind your spirit of the Antichrist according to Matthew chapter 18 verse 18, which promises me whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You cannot operate in my life because the greater one dwells within me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing me the way, the truth, and the life. I can relax in you because you have provided for me for my every need as I cooperate with you, your word, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I loose the Holy Spirit in my life according to Matthew 18, verse 18, which states, Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me, for walking with me until the end of this age. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, we just denounce the spirit of the Antichrist from having power and dominion over your life. So as always, if you're on here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come and ask you to forgive me for my sins and, and knowingly and unknowingly come into my heart and wash me clean and forgive me. Then I thank you for forgiving me and I ask that you come into my heart, God, and fill me with your Holy Spirit and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Now release the power of the Holy Spirit to operate in my life, to guide me to all truth and wisdom and understanding that I'll be a vessel for you and a witness for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. And if you are a backslider, God just restored you back to right standing and right relationship with him through his son. And then I want to ask if you uh, want to sow a seed into this ministry, feel free to do so. I put the link on here. I thank those of you who have sown a seed into the ministry last week. Those seeds are definitely being used in our ministry. Any seed that you sow into this Bible class each week, it goes right back into the ministry. That's what God instructed me. So I, I just want to thank those of you who, who obeyed the Spirit of God to sow the seed. And I, I encourage you to sow your seed. It's not for me. It's for the ministry. It's for the teaching material, the things that God has given me to do for the ministry, to be effective for you to hear God's word. And, and allow the Spirit of God to touch your heart in a way to sow your seed with an expectation. Because when you sow your seed, God promises in return, he will cause to come back to you, good measured, shaken together, running over. Men shall give into your bosom. In other words, it's an exchange factor that takes place. When you sow your seed, God will cause others to bless you in return. And I thank you again for tuning in tonight. All of you who came on tonight, God bless you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, Victor, George, and many others. Uh, Pastor Kelly, God bless you. Thank you, uh, Webster, LaShonda. You know, God bless you all. And I pray that something has been said that will encourage you. Uh, Pastor Shaw, God bless you. I pray something has been said that will really encourage you. Uh, Desiree, thank you. I, you know, and, and stay motivated. Stay excited. Don't allow the spirit of the enemy to deceive or manipulate you from following after God's truth. Study the word. I said over and over because I stay in the word myself every day. You got to stay in God's word to know the tactics and the strategies of the enemy and how to defeat him. And I guarantee when you get the word inside of you, the word going to manifest outside of you. That when people do come to you with a false doctrine, a false teaching, you're going to recognize that spirit by the spirit. As 1 John 4 and 1, to so believe not every spirit, but try every spirit, whether it be of God, because many false prophets have gone on to the world. So you're going to know the word and you're going to know the enemy and you're going to know his tactics. So you stay encouraged until next week. 
God bless you. And Father, we thank you for this lesson tonight. I pray, Lord God, that your word have not fallen upon deaf ears, but the word, Father God, has, has been rooted and grounded in our hearts that we have heard tonight, O oh God, and that you begin to play it in our ears as a record, to keep on playing over and over until it gets in our spirit. And allow, Father God, the word to bring a change in our belief system, in our mindsets, and our attitudes that it would line up with the word of God, that we walk by faith and not by sight and putting action with our words. Because we say we love you, God, then let us be an outward demonstration of the love of God to somebody who don't know you as the Lord and Savior. And we give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all stay encouraged until next week. Next week, we're going to talk about, next week's going to be a good lesson too. Let me share this right quick before I go. The spirit of error. The spirit of error. 1 John chapter 4, verse 6. So we're going to talk about the spirit of error next week. All right. So share this message with somebody that you know. They may need to hear this. And go back and listen to it again. And allow it to just minister to you over and over till you get it in your spirit. Until next next time, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in us. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom.